Hey guys, Nicole Cooper here, hopping on live. It has been forever since I've been on live. Um, wanted to hop on here to talk to you guys, especially my entrepreneurs out there, to tell you that it's not you have not missed your moment. You just need to do this one thing. You have not missed your moment. You just need to do this one thing. So this message truly goes out to my folks that are over 40, right? And it doesn't mean it only applies to those that are over 40, but it's those of us who have spent a lot of years trying a lot of things, doing a lot of different things, and we had a plan for what our life was going to look like by a certain age, right? We had a plan for what our life was going to look like by a certain age. But the truth is, is that you didn't realize a lot of those things were just exploring until you figured it out. You know, we try things and we assume that it's going to be the one thing that's going to get us where we want to be, and then next thing you know, we done did 20 different things, right? Um, but what happens, and this is what I noticed what happened with me, time is moving, age is creeping upwards, and you look around and you're like, snap, my reality doesn't look like my plan, right? My reality doesn't look like my plan. And so you start dealing with the mind playing tricks on you. You start asking yourself, like, man, am I missing out? Did I miss my moment? Is it too late? You go through this whole mindset game. And I want to just let you know you didn't miss your moment. You just have to do this one thing, right, this one thing. So if you are an entrepreneur um, and somebody with big goals, big dreams, anybody, it doesn't really matter. I'm talking about if you feel that way, right? I'm saying for people over 40 because I'm, I'm over 40. I haven't hit over 60 yet, but it can apply to you too. It's to anybody who feels like you may have missed your moment, but you still got goals, hopes, dreams, plans, vision, and ideas, okay? And you just are wondering, like, when is it going to come to pass or is it too late? I want you all to know it's not too late, but you got to do this one thing, okay? So the one thing that you got to do, well, I'm going I'm to I'm back up. If you have a vision of something that you really, really want to create, you got you to gotta write that thing down, right? What exactly is it that you want to do? The reason why I say that is for many of us, we have this mind that we say we're going to do something, but the minute we walk away from that whole conversation with ourselves and we go online on social media or we have a conversation with somebody, somehow we're influenced to go do something in a totally different direction. I'm finding it. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm a coach, a business coaching consultant, so I help entrepreneurs, especially faith-based entrepreneurs, get in alignment with their God-given assignments. I help people identify what it is that they're called to do, and I help them to put a real blueprint and business plan to it, all right? So if you work with hundreds and thousands of people all over the world in business, but now I specialize in helping people operate and do the thing that they are born and called to do, your zone of genius, and how to package that up, price it up, and put a focus on it so that it can actually become a super successful business that creates transformation for the people that you work with, right? So that's what I do. But one of the things that I'm noticing about a lot of us is we forgot what we wanted, okay? I'm not going to say we don't know what we want. We forgot. And what I mean by that is we have so many influences influencing us that we somehow forgot what we wanted to do. And when you forget what you want to do, you become easily persuaded by what is going on around you. If somebody is doing something over here that looks like it's making a lot of money, you go try that. If somebody has a conversation with you and say, you know, you should really try doing this thing, then you go do that. You start having all these different people influence you into doing other things outside of that thing that you said you were going to do. So, number one, you got to get, you got to remind yourself. You got to write down what it is that you really want to do, the vision that God is giving you. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain, though it may tarry, meaning tarry, meaning it may take some time to come to, come to pass, it shall come to pass, right? So it may tarry, 
sometimes what we want take time, but it shall come to pass. So number one, you gotta that that's not the one thing. You gotta write that down and identify what you want. But here's number two and the one thing that I wanna recommend that you do. And this is so important. You have to commit to a time frame of going all in on that thing with no distraction. And what I mean by that is give yourself a 12-month window and say, for the next 12 months, I'm going all in on this idea, and I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm not going to do something else. I'm not going to be deterred. I'm not going to do da, 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 da. I saw something the other day about Japan. <clears throat> Japan, now, I don't know if you all understand Japan and their legacy and all the stuff about business, wealth, blah, blah, blah. But the average business in Japan plans their businesses out for 50 years ahead. That's what they plan for it. They plan for where their business is going to be in 50 years. They're thinking legacy, all right? In America, we probably plan, we say we plan for three to five years. We actually put, we, we actually give ourselves a window of like 90 days, and then we make an attempt for about a week, and then we quit. That's America, because most of us want microwave. But what you have to do is commit to a thing and do that one thing over and over again every single day, over and over again. You eat, breathe, sleep, and do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. To you, it's going to sound like, God, I do this so much that everybody already knows. Like it seems like you're like a broken record saying the same thing and that you assume everybody done heard what you had to say. And the truth is, no, your business is to continue to get in front of your ideal clients and those who need your services consistently over time, and you're going to continue to get repeat business. Here's what I've noticed about us, right, most of us. And this is I put a post up the other day because I've been getting mentored by a lot of different millionaires and stuff like that, and they all say the same thing. They say, Nicole, you got to get used to doing the boring thing. You got to get used to doing the same thing over and over again, but maintaining your enthusiasm about what you do. The reality is that the only real way you can maintain your enthusiasm is if it's in alignment with who you are, right? If you really, truly, honestly, sincerely actually love what you do. If you are only doing things for money, only doing things because it's a popular trend, only doing things because you see so many people talking about it on social media, only doing things for any other reason outside of that, you're not going to last. You're not going to last, and you're not going to get to the bag. You're not going to get to the money. What I teach people how to do, I teach coaching according to the identity in which God created you for I am a faith-based coach. I talk about God and your identity and understanding why it's important to know who God created you to be because, listen, God is about business. God is giving you an assignment on the earth, and a lot of us actually are gifted to do the things that we do. You might be really, really good at accounting. You're good at numbers. You're good at being a CPA. You're good at managing money. You're good at those things, so that's the service that you provide. You might be really, really good at design, so you help people's brand images look impeccable and amazing. You might be an amazing fashion stylist, and my Wi-Fi is real bad where I'm at. You might be amazing fashion stylist that can make people look really good. That is your gift that God is giving you. You might be really great at speaking, and God has called you to be an author and a speaker and a trainer and do different things. You might be good at whatever it is that you do. That is the gift that God is giving you to present it to the world, right? That is what God gifted you to do. The issue with most people that I see right now who are constantly trying to do all these different things and it never works is because most people are following what they see other people do and they're trying to emulate that, all right? So let me tell y'all, let me break that down for you. When you try to be a version of what you see other people do, when you try to copy other people, when you try to recreate yourself as a duplicate of somebody else, what happens is You become an imposter. Why? Because you are manufacturing a version of yourself that is not true to who you naturally are. So this is what happens. When you follow what somebody else is doing, even to a T, you can have somebody give you the entire blueprint. They can walk you through it, hold your hand, come to your house, 
whisper in your ear. They can give you every single step you need to take to win in that thing, and you can fail. You want to know why? Because you are feeling like an imposter. Why do you feel like an imposter? Because you are an imposter. That's not what you're called to do. That's not your godly assignment. That is not in your identity. That is not the thing that you were born for. That is not the thing that you are passionate about. That is not the thing that you are good at doing. That is not the thing that you're confident and comfortable with showing up for. So when it comes down to you winning in something, if you've been trying over and over and over and over and over again, and you realize, like, dang, I don't know why I've been trying for so long. I'm doing everything right, but... I just can't seem to get the results that I want. It's because you are out of alignment. You are completely out of alignment. I'm going to tell you all, that has been my story. It's like a lot of us don't understand just because you are good at something doesn't mean that you should do something. I want you all to put that in the chat. Just because you are good at something doesn't mean that you should do something, okay? And that's what we don't understand. A lot of us don't realize I'm good at this, but that's not what I'm called to do. My thing was I was good at a lot of different things. So I would have a lot of success in a lot of things that I try, but I would get to the top and I'd be like, I actually hate this. I really don't enjoy this. I enjoyed aspects of it, but it was always a frustration in my spirit because I was like, God, I feel like this is a counterfeit version of what I'm supposed to be doing, but it is not it. I knew in my spirit that I was not in alignment with where I was supposed to be, but I was frustrated because I was not able to to, to get clear about what that thing was because I was so influenced by what was going to make me some money. <laughs> if you were telling me I could make 50 grand a month doing something, baby, you had my attention, right? Because I knew how to make money. Money is, that's my gift. Like I know how to produce, make money, market, sell, train, lead. That's my gift, right? So sometimes your gift can get pimped in the wrong platform, that, yes, it might look like you're winning, but it's not really the godly assignment that God has for you. It is the counterfeit version of it that is delaying the destiny that God has for you. So when you're out here following all these people, y'all got to be real careful of this new influence influencer culture where we are following people because of their flash and promotion. It's like we are chasing, I heard Marshawn talk about it today, it's like the new rap video. Somebody come out here and they show you stuff that they got and all of a sudden you're doing it on. And and here's the, the, the... Yes, no, maybe so. Can y'all hear? Are we back? No. I'll come right back. 